It's Tensor versus Snapdragon. It's software magic versus raw hardware power. It's the Google Pixel 8 Pro versus the OnePlus 12. If you're looking to spend big for one of the top Android phones and you don't want a Galaxy S24 Ultra, these are two of the biggest options on the table, but you might be surprised to find out that the choice is harder than it might first seem. That and more in today's Pixel 8 Pro versus OnePlus 12 head to head. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas and OnePlus has knocked it out of the park with its 12, bringing it right up to speed with some of the most impressive Android smartphones on the market. It's being compared with one of the other best Android phones released recently, and that's the Google Pixel 8 Pro, the best Pixel to date. Let's address the elephant in the room, and that's the price. On release, the Pixel 8 Pro's RRP is about $1,000, where OnePlus 12 sits at around $800. Though they are much closer in the real world now that the former has been available for a little while, and you can find a deal pretty easily on the internet, making the comparison a little more logical. They're both big, heavy flagship devices, though the OnePlus is a hair bigger and heavier. Not that you really feel it though. They're both weather resistant, the IP68 on the Pixel 8 Pro versus the IP65 on the OnePlus 12 simply means that the Pixel will last longer if you drop it in a pool, for example, but both are the same dust resistance rating. Physically, they do feel quite different. They are both slab phones, but the Pixel 8 Pro feels a little chubbier with flatter side rails and a flatter back, though the actually physically bigger OnePlus 12 feels sleeker thanks to its sort of curved edges and sharp, shallower camera housing. I find the OnePlus to be the easier of the two to hold in the hand, mainly because my finger rests where the camera circle is on the back of the phone, and the Pixel 8 Pro's camera bar is a little higher up. Those with bigger hands will probably feel differently about this. The more tactile, grippier, frosted back of the OnePlus is grippier than the slippery Pixel 8 Pro in my opinion, and I would recommend getting a case for the Pixel 8 Pro simply because it is just that slippery. It seems like all smartphone makers are boosting their display brightness this year, and OnePlus is no different. The already larger and sharper panel of the OnePlus 12 is significantly brighter than the Pixel 8 Pro's panel, which is not something I expected to say since the latter screen is already a marvellous item. It's just that OnePlus decided to crank it up to 12 with the new model, and as a result, the OnePlus 12 screen is easier to see in direct sunlight and offers more brightness in HDR video too. That said, Google's panel is tuned with more contrast, even compared to the OnePlus in its vivid mode. OnePlus seems to, for the longest time, be putting flatter color profiles, especially with contrast, and it's nice to see that you can tune it, it's just when watching YouTube videos, the content seems to stand out more, be more dynamic with the Google Pixels panel, thanks to that added contrast. Speaking of dynamic, OnePlus's use of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 makes this phone feel more sprightly than the Pixel 8 Pro. Combined with UFS 4.0 storage and 12 to 16 gigabytes of memory, this helps performance both in and out of games. And if you care at all about intense 3D gaming, there's no competition. The OnePlus 12 wins every single time. It's pretty much the fastest phone on the planet right now with some immense speed. This is especially apparent in titles like Real Racing 3, COD Mobile and Genshin Impact, not to mention the fact that OnePlus's vapor chamber cooling keeps everything cool when pushing the phone to its limits. Google's Tensor G3 can run quite hot and long play sessions will result in performance drops as things start to heat up. And while day to day this isn't something you might run into, it can be an issue in those busier days. Which is where you'll find the OnePlus 12's real strength to come alive, and that's its battery life. Ever since logging in and putting my SIM card into the 12, it has been a two day phone minimum every single time. And I'm convinced that on days where I don't use my phone all that much, I could get three days out of it if I really wanted to. Whatever OnePlus is doing with the software, it's doing a tremendous job. And I'm sure this is helped by the larger 5400 mAh battery compared to the 5050 mAh cell found in the Pixel, but between the two, it is the OnePlus I'd be picking up for longevity. And we haven't even mentioned the 100 watt charger included in the box, or in the US this is an 80 watt charger, but even still, 
that's one more charger than you get with the Pixel 8 Pro. And it also means 100% in just 26 or 30 minutes, depending on your region with the OnePlus and 50 watt wireless charging, which will top it up in just under an hour. Compared that with the no charger included with the Pixel and the slower top up times, yeah, there's no competition here either. It feels like at this stage, the OnePlus 12 is absolutely bodying the Pixel 8 Pro, but this is where things get a little more interesting. OnePlus is offering four years of platform upgrades and five years of security updates, which sounds pretty good, but then you compare it to Google's seven years of updates and it makes the Pixel seem the better option for long-term buyers. It's no secret that Google's focus is its software magic. It's even called its camera tools Magic Editor and Magic Eraser. Audio Eraser is one of my particular favorites, it's a very handy tool. There's a really useful set of features with Google's camera suite that elevates it above the hardware that it's using. Contrast this with OnePlus's reliance on its hardware for this generation, and you start to see the pros and cons of each device. It really is sort of hardware focus versus software focus in this comparison. And I truly believe that these software features are worth buying the Pixel 8 Pro for, which makes it harder to pick between the two. Something that should really put a cat amongst the pigeons though is the camera section. As you can see from the spec sheets, both are packed to the gills with some of the most incredible hardware you can find on a modern smartphone, save for the Huawei's and Samsung's of the world. The main difference is that OnePlus is utilizing a shorter periscope zoom lens with a bigger sensor underneath it and is using a higher resolution selfie shooter with some higher resolution video modes. In practice, at least across the main and the ultra wide, these two trade blows in a big way, in sharpness, in clarity, exposure. Sometimes I found the OnePlus to produce a nicer image and sometimes it was the Pixel. I really mean it when I say OnePlus has caught up fast and furiously with the top flight smartphone cameras. Even if it doesn't have all the cool software tools to correct or augment shots after the fact. When we switched to the telephoto cameras, I was surprised to find that the OnePlus was taking the cleaner photos the majority of the time, despite having the on paper inferior hardware setup. In all kinds of lighting conditions, the OnePlus telephoto was the better option. Video is shockingly close though, with smooth, stable, reactive UHD 60p video, though if you want a little more dynamic range, Google's Video Boost available in Ultra HD 30p is a great addition and can really change a scene, where the 8K 24p option found on the OnePlus isn't quite as useful in my opinion and should be left off because it really doesn't add much apart from contributing to more storage usage. On the whole, it's really hard to pick between these two. On one hand, you have a spec beast with some immense battery life and a great display as well. And on the other side, you have a set of incredibly useful software tools and maybe a more comprehensive camera package right now, but at a higher cost. I think I'd have to go OnePlus 12 for this comparison. It's just got that bigger, brighter panel, the speedier processor that will keep the phone speedier for longer. And I know the long-term software support isn't as good with the OnePlus 12, but I upgrade my phone every three or four years anyway. And the OnePlus 12 carries that. Let me know which of these two you would pick in the comment section. And that's it from me guys. Please do hit like if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to never miss another upload. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police and I'll catch you later. Cheers.